This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate flight sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion Holtes, current and future configurations. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today, very exciting. We've got some relatively new navigation methods in three of the Warbirds, the F109 K4 Kufurst. We've got the Focke Wolf 190 AA Anton and the Focke Wolf 190 D9 Dora. The type of navigation is known as Lawrence Beam Approach. The way it works is it's going to allow us to home into the approach for a runway. The way we're going to do this in DCS is we're going to find a runway that has an ILS instrument landing system. I'm in Caucasus here and I found Sanaki. It does have an ILS on runway 09 and I know that because if I go to the approach point which is 10 miles out in this direction I can see a frequency 108.90 megahertz. That symbology means that this runway, this approach has an ILS system and that's what we're going to hook into. A modern aircraft ILS system will give you azimuth and elevational altitude guiding. This Lorenz system will only give us azimuth, not altitude. Altitude will have to be done via other methods. The way we're going to do this for all three aircraft is we're going to take off in these three aircraft. By the way, I've got my buddies Dragon and RC with me. Say hello, boys. Hello. <laughs> Say hello. We're going to take off from Kobileti. We're going to fly roughly north here via map and compass. We are going to continue to fly north to intercept the radial for the runway. Once we intercept the radial on the runway, we're going to turn into the base here and we're going to stay on the radial via our Lawrence approach system. As we get closer to the runway, we will then reduce our altitude until we hit the outer marker here and the inner marker here. And from there on, we are visual approach. So let's get the aircraft set up. We have to set them up from the mission editor and we're going to set them up all the same. We've got our frequency there of 108.9. Let's jump into this guy here. Let's click on radio presets here. So this is the radio here. The homing device that we're using via the radio is the AFN2 homing system and that is used on all three aircraft. And we are just going to change this frequency here. If you want to know the minimum the frequency can be, just put one in and see what it goes down to. And if you want the maximum, just go like that and it will tell you the maximum. Ours is 108.90. And that's it set. Let's do the other aircraft as well. This is the Anton frequency. It's, I've already done this one, but I'm just showing you it's there. Uh, it's almost identical radio, slightly different. And for the Dora, you can see I've done there. Let's jump in the cockpits and show you how to set it up in the cockpit. So let's show setting it up in the curve first. First, right hip, radio, first. Make sure our channel preset is not on one. As long as it's not on one, it's okay. So I'm going to leave it on two. Next, communications, homing. We're going to go to homing. We're just getting static at the moment because we are outside of the catchment area of the Lorenz system. Once we get within the pickup area, we will get the relevant tones. The instrumentation we're going to use, our visual homing indicator here, our compass repeater here, and of course our IFR instruments as well because we're going to be flying IFR conditions. Next, we need to set up our course on the compass repeater. So we need to know the course of the radial. There are different ways of doing this. Probably the easiest is just come here, grab the measuring tool there, plot the measuring tool along there, and we can see we have a radial of 094 degrees. Remember, that is true degrees. We're going to convert that to magnetic, which of course is what these or just about all aircraft use. But what is the magnetic variation in this part of the world at this part of history? Well, it's negative six degrees. So negative six degrees means that magnetic radial of 088 degrees. So back in, let's get the compass repeater and we are going to turn the dial to 088 degrees. Very hard to do on the ground, it's a bit wobbly. That is 088. That is pretty much everything set up. Let me quickly show you in the other aircraft. Anton, we've got the channel selector there, homing selector here, homing, and don't forget you can also turn the radio up and down. And we've got the compass repeater there, and the visual homing indicator there. And the Dora, channel selector there, homing there, compass repeater there. Let's get back to the curve first. And it's going to be very hard to explain in the air in a live multiplayer unpausable server. So let me tell you how we're going to do it. First of all, once we've reached the radial, we'll switch over to our homing instrumentation. By that point, the transmission will be picked up and we'll get a series of tones. Very simply put, 
if we get lots of short beeps, beep, 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 then we're going to be on the left of the radial, and we need to drift right. If we get lots of dashes, dash, 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 then we're on the right of the radial, and we need to shift left. If we get a constant beep, then that means the tones have merged together, and we are on radial. And if we slip left or slip right, then we'll know how to get back to radial. However, this aircraft has been seen fit to have the AFN2 visual indicator added as well. So as well as the audio, we get a visual. We get this needle here. If we are right of radial, it will be to the right. If it's left of radial, it will be to the left. And if it's on radial, it'll be where it is now. We also get a signal strength indicator. That's this here. Once we're very close to the signal emitter, it will be right up here. If we're far away, it'll be down here. It's not really a ranger because it doesn't tell you the exact range, it just gives signal strength. So you can use it as a very rough guide in your approach in terms of glide slope. As well as that, once we're on radial, we're going to marry our compass repeater here with our course set, which is 088 magnetic. All those things together should, in theory, get us down to the runway. As ever, this takes quite a long time to do, so we're just going to try it once and hopefully it will work. Okay, boys, we are going to try and remember how to fly these warbirds and I will see you on the runway. Right, who's in Anton? I'm in the end. And Dragon mm. is in my door. Are either of you guys not ready to go? I'm going to take off very slowly and not very surely, and then we're going to get on a compass heading of 330, where we will try and intercept the radial up north. Here we go. Let's try not to embarrass ourselves. We have a tendency to do. Oh, my giddy arm. Apologise. Alley viewers, I can still do it. <laughs> Airborne! Oh, that was ugly. That was ugly. I'm not used to the map. I know that I make a lot of excuses. But the massive throw of these pedals, I'm used to about two inches uh -huh. throw. Come on. Now, one annoying feature of real life magnetic compasses like this is that they don't work when we're rolling. So they only actually display when we're wings level. Can we get a little bit of altitude? Pretty much, we just go on this heading now until we intercept the radial. I'd love to tell you how high I am, but I just never seem to learn how to use these altimeters. Uh, I think I'm 700 meters ASL. Yeah, I am 700 meters. Ah, I hit the tone, guys. I hit the catchment area of the radio. I can hear beeps. Yep, I can hear beeps. They're not actually the beeps we're after. They're not the um, homing beeps. We are in range, but we are not uh, in the beam. Right, yeah. So we're picking up the station, but we're not in the beam approach yet. There it is. I've just got it. It's really obvious. So if you hear that, valued viewers, that, that is basically saying I'm way to the right of the radial, uh, which we know we are. So we're going to keep flying until we intercept our, our radial. With regards to the visual, you can see the range there, or the signal strength on the left needle, and you can see the activation of the azimuth guidance there in the lower needle. It only works with the, uh, the beep, obviously. There's my boys are right next to me. Look. Hey, boys. That's me, I think. Drop. Okay, we're on, we're on the radio now. You see, we've got no deflection on the needle, and we're a solid tone. So now turn to set the compass repeater to the 088 magnetic. And we've actually come off the edge, we've come off the left side now of the radio, which is annoying, but okay, we're, we've got the right course, but we're left of radial. Now we want to pull right to radial, so our track now wants to be shift right. And then we'll get back on radial. Okay, listen to the tone, watch that needle. This deviation is becoming less. and less and on radial now set the compass repeater to the course select 088 it's going to be about there i'm going to level off a little bit more out there we are now completely on radial on track now look at the range the range as we're right on top of it off power flaps down now we've got to listen for the uh, the beacons, the inner and outer markers, which are there obviously to tell us the range of the runway, two miles and one mile. Okay, watch for the slip, watch for the slip. Retrim that there. Oh, it's going to work first time, guys, first time. Right, I've got to concentrate now, make sure I don't go off radio. That's all. I've got one job, and that is that. And lose altitude, I'm way high. I'm slipping left. Okay, back on track, on track. Check flaps. Flaps down a little further. Probably put my gear out, I think. I haven't heard an outer marker yet. Everything says I'm still on track. Gear out. Look for my lights. 
I've slipped off radio. Turn left, shift the track left, and back on track. Get the heading right. And the course is set, the heading's good. Right, this is going worryingly well. Something needs to go wrong. Something usually goes wrong at this point. The closer you get, the harder it gets. Out of marker, out of marker, hit two miles. Set speed, check. Altitude, 200 meters, ASL, check. 600 feet. Everything's perfect, worryingly perfect. Come on, something needs to go wrong. It's me flying here. Everything, I've got it absolutely pinned. Everything's perfect. Still can't see the runway. I've got about a half a mile's visibility set. Too slow, angle of attack's too high. Track is good. Inner marker hit. One mile or less. Tally runway. Oh my god, that was that was the best approach I think I've ever done. Absolutely chuffed. Tell me my landing gear's down. Three green and checked. Oh now you know me guys. I do not like to boast. But that was pretty much perfect on a first go as well. Super chuffed. No, don't screw it up. Don't screw up like you always do, Cap. Warbird Towers, so I'm going through a three pointer here. Just stall up. Alpha set. Down. Right now, don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. No, 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 no. It's the hardest bit. Ah, uh, guys, I've landed a perfect IFR landing in a BF 109. First attempt, baby. Right, let's go see where my boys got to. Oh, look at RC landing! Oh, yep. the boys are both here! Dragon, when did you get here? He was right behind you. I just followed you as closely as, uh, I, as I could. It was notice. just perfect alignment. That's not... Uh, boys, now, you know me, I don't like to boast. And the value viewers probably want to log out. But confirm me, that was the first time I've ever tried that in complete whiteout conditions. And we got a perfect approach. I must be frank, it, it was the first time. It was the first time. Yay, super cap. That's the system. Really easy to use. Really rewarding as well, I can tell you that. Thank you, boys. And I'll see you later.